Tabernacle Baptist Church of Roanoke, Texas. We're so glad that you're joining with us at the time that you have to be available. We trust and pray as we come to look into the Word of God, that the message will be a blessing to you, that if you're unsaved, it'll bring you to realize the need of salvation and you will accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior. As a believer, you will be encouraged as the message goes forth. We trust and pray that the Holy Spirit would bring about conviction from the message. God would receive the glory. Christ would be lifted up. The Bible said if he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. Today, if you have your Bible, we'd ask you to turn with us to John 14. Our text will be verses 1 through 4. The title of the message is, Jesus, I will come again. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we come to approach this message, we pray for the anointing of your spirit, that we might bring it in his power, and that it might bring about conviction and conversions and encouragement. And we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. And what a comfort, especially in the day in which we live, with all that's going on and all of the changes that are taking place, we do need an untroubled heart. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now, I want you to pay close attention to verse number three. And if I go, and he did, and prepare a place for you, he is, I will come again. And Jesus cannot lie. He said, if I go, and he did, and prepare a place for you, and he is, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. Jesus said, I will come again. Now, there are many views upon the return of Christ held by many different groups. So this is an important distinction for us. Because of this, we must be clear on what we believe concerning the second coming of Christ. I'll not be able to be exhaustive in our consideration of what we believe on this very important subject, I will give an overview of what and why we believe in the return of Christ. Number one, the certainty of his coming. Now, there have been scoffers from day one that says, well, where is his coming? Where is his coming? But the Bible teaches us he is coming again. There are 318 references in the New Testament concerning the second coming of Christ. And as always, the Bible always proves what it says. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. That's what's wrong today with presentation of God's word. It's coming to pass that it's a private interpretation and that is not so. The Bible said very plainly that the scripture is of, no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. That's why dear friends, you need to know your Bible you know, need to know what thus saith the Lord. 
For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. For thousands of years, the prophets pointed toward one thing. The first coming of Christ. And he came. Now we have the promise of his return. And he will come again. Jesus said he was coming back. He told his disciples in the upper room that he would leave for a while, but that he would be returning. Look at John 14, 3 again. And if I go, and he did, prepare a place for you, and he is, I will come again. Now, dear friend, nothing could be plainer than what Jesus himself said. I will come again. And the purpose would be to receive you unto myself. That's the believers. That's those who have trusted him as personal Savior. And that where I am, there you may be also. The angels told the disciples that it would be the same Jesus. Remember in Acts chapter 1 and verse 11, who would come in like manner, this same Jesus, who would come in like manner as he has gone. Notice that. The Bible said very plainly. The Bible also affirms the manner of his coming. His coming will be personal. The same Jesus, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven. One day Jesus is returning. Not an angel, not one of the patriarchs of old, but it will be the same Jesus that came the first time, went to the cross, shed his blood, was buried, and on the third day he arose. And then at the appropriate time, he ascended back into heaven. The same Jesus. The same Jesus. Not another. But also we're warned in the Bible that his coming will be suddenly. Suddenly. Therefore, Matthew 24, 44. Matthew 24, 44. Therefore. Because, therefore, Why? Because he's promised to come back. Because he's coming back personally. The Bible tells us. Therefore be ye also ready. Every individual needs to be ready for the coming of Christ. He said very plainly. For in such an hour as ye think not. The son of man cometh. He also said as a thief in the night. That refers to being totally unexpected. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a travail upon a woman with child. And look at this phrase, ladies and gentlemen. They shall not escape. Oh, the Bible affirms to us. Because he has promised that he would come again. That every single person needs to be ready when he comes. And the only way you can be ready is to be born again. Is to have trusted his finished work on the cross. Confessing your sins. Asking his forgiveness. And by faith trusting him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thirdly. We see the signs of his coming. Look at Matthew 24. Verses 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, 
so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days they were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Look at verse 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Like Noah, Noah preached 120 years. The Lord has preached through his preachers the second coming for now a little over 2,000 years. Now while Noah was building the ark and preaching righteousness to the people, he was looking for the flood. But the Bible says, God saw the world was full of corruption. The people were corrupt and violence was the model of the day. Is there any clearer sign than that one verse that Christ is coming back? We live in such a violent society today. We live in such a corrupt society today. People have become more corrupted than they ever have. And these were those signs that he said as in the days of Noah. Think about it. Look at chapter Gen uh, Genesis chapter 6, 5 through 7. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Another. Another proof that as in the days of Noah, the days of today are likewise. And the Bible said that every imagination of his thoughts, of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made him. But I want you to notice the people in Noah's day are likewise. They have been nulled to a false sense of security and somewhat are walking around in a daze paying no attention to the signs that are coming to pass that the coming of Christ draws near. You see, the Bible, went up, the Bible said that people went about their daily living in the usual way without any thought of coming judgment. Think about that. Look back at Matthew 24, verse 38. For as in the days... That were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. In other words, they were just going about like nothing had been said. Nothing was going to take place. God hadn't warned or nothing else. They were just going to do their thing. Which represents the spirit of rebellion. And that's the spirit we have today. Rebellion against God and what God says. Look at it. And today... Society is not paying any attention. It's imploding. It's imploding. It's coming apart at the seams. Just like it was in the days of Noah. But people, as I said, have been brought to a, to a, to a semi-consciousness. Paying no attention to the cry from the Lord, repent, repent. Just going about like nothing's going to take place. And the Bible said very plainly. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Then it changed. Then it changed. I can just imagine. When that door was shut. And that first drop failed. And the rain began to fall. And the water began to rise. Then the attention of the people who for 120 years 
had been sought begin to scream out, begin to cry out. I can just imagine. But it was too late. It was too late. And once you are stepping out into eternity, it's too late. Look at it. Look at it. Today there are thousands of people who pay no attention to the matter of the second coming of Christ. And truly, we're in the days like Noah. It's just like looking at the history. Look at it. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 10. And it came to pass. And it's coming to pass. Now the scoffers might say, well, where is he? Where is he? Oh, it's been going on so long. You've been preaching and preaching that he's coming. Let me tell you something. Everything that the Bible says from the Lord, it will come to pass. And in his time, according to his will, it will come. And it was God's will. And when it came to pass, notice it. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Look at it. What other signs do we need? Matthew 24, 6 through 7 says, Wars and rumors of wars. Is that not so? There's wars going on all over this world. Matthew 24, 9. The persecution of the nation of Israel. Is it not? The end hate and uh, disrespect of the Jew, Israel, is becoming anti-Semitic more so every day, especially under the current leadership of countries including America. Look at it. Increased knowledge. Daniel 12, 4. You know, People are becoming more educated than any time in the history of man and have less abilities on how to use it properly. Look at Matthew 24, 24, false Christ and false prophets. Satan is building his church faster than we can even imagine. And the representative of that is the church of Laodicea, the rule of the people. The current model for building a church is find out what people want and that's what you give them. But that's not what the Lord said. The Lord said he was building his church. It's not up to man. And he also said in writing to the pastoral epistles where he said, and these things I write unto you that you might know how to present yourself or behave yourself in the house of God. Oh, there's also almost every corner in America. There's a so-called type of church, the Bible says. But once again, Jesus said, I will come again. And his coming is going to be twofold. Number one, there will be a the rapture of the catching away of the believers in Christ. Now go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Look at it careful now. For the Lord himself, once again, the same Jesus, the one who was taken up, and Acts chapter 1 and verse 11, shall so come in like manner. Shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. That's Jesus. That's Jesus, the same one who was born of the virgin, who went to Calvary, who shed his blood, who offered the payment for the sin debt 
that we owed. And to prove that it was accepted on the third day, he arose from the grave. The same Jesus. The same Jesus. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall ever we be with the Lord. Jesus. Jesus. He's coming to rapture out before the tribulation starts. You see, he's coming for his own to keep us from the terrible time of tribulation which will come upon this earth. He said, we are not accounted for that time. Look at it. Then after seven years of tribulation, he will return to the earth. He will destroy the Antichrist, bind the devil and reign with the saints for a thousand years which is referred to as the Millennial Kingdom. Think about that. Think about that. And do you know why the Bible speaks of the Second Coming? As we said, some 318 times, He gives us the signs that the Second Coming is drawing nigh, and they need to be, and we need to be prepared for but concerning the rapture, there is no set time. In a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, we shall be changed. But there is numerous warnings to be prepared. Because when the trumpet sounds, the dead will rise first. We the alive remain shall be called out. Then in 2 Thessalonians, those that have rejected the truth shall be sent a strong delusion that they might be believe alive that they might be damned because they had pleasured unrighteousness. It's false to think. And there were some erroneous tree, uh, tree teachings come out. Well, after the rapture, rapture takes place, then we know what we need to do. No, no, no. When the rapture takes place, if you've not trusted Christ, if you've not been born again, and you've heard the gospel, you will not be given an opportunity to be saved. Oh, listen to me. And it can happen at any moment. It can be happened any moment. When the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, when the body of Christ is completed, the trumpet's going to sound because Christ is coming back to get his own. And you need to know that. You need to be sure that you've been born again. You need to know without a shadow of a doubt. You need to know what Paul said. I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded. He's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. If there's anything that you need to know, ladies and gentlemen, you need to know a no-so salvation, not a hope-so salvation. The Bible said, These things I write unto you that you might know you have eternal life, even to those that believe on the name of the Son of God. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let false preaching preach to you. You can and must know there has been a time. There has been a time in your life when you heard the gospel, the Holy Spirit brought about conviction that you needed to be saved, and you by faith, Confess your sin and ask the Lord to forgive you and you were born again because the Bible said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, you need to know that. The Bible tells us very plainly. Hereby we do know him if we keep his commandments. Don't let anything bring doubt upon you about being born again. And if you're not, you need to trust Christ as personal Savior. Right now. Right now. Do you know that the rapture could take place even while I'm bringing this message? Think about that. Think about that. Notice that. Now, I can give you this 
the time of his coming. No man knoweth the exact time of his return. Look at Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father. But because of the imp, the time that he has told us that in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, listen, he may come before, as I said, I finish this message. You see, the main point is this. Are we ready for his return? You remember he told his disciples, the hour you, you don't need to know. Why? Because you need to be ready at all time. You need to be ready at all time. It makes no difference what hour of the day or night he might come. The fact is he's coming. And he's warned everybody to be prepared. Look at it again. Matthew 24, 44. Therefore be ye also ready. 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 For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. You know the sadness of today? We still have that group of people. Thousands and thousands of people were just like the people in the days of Noah. Matthew 24, 39. He knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So also the coming of the Son of Man may be. Now let me get personal with you. Listen to me. Are you ignoring the warning that the Lord has given you to be ready for eternity? Do you know it's appointed unto man once to die, but after that the judgment? Are you? Are you, are, are you assuming that what he said was not so? Are you assuming that death doesn't catch you? Are you assuming you've got all time in the world? The Bible says, don't brag about tomorrow. Sufficient is the day, the evil of today. Listen to me. Listen to me very careful. Jesus himself said, I will come back. And it could be at any moment. And what a shame. You see, it's not that you can't be saved. If you're not saved, it's because you rejected it. But preacher, you don't know where I've been or what I've done. No, but God does. But God still loves you. He said, I will in no wise cast out anybody that comes to the Father through me. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said he came to seek and to save that which is lost. The Bible tells us very plainly. The only reason that a people are not saved is they reject the salvation God has offered through his son, the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by him. But they choose to reject God's plan of salvation, thinking that possibly their idea of salvation might be acceptable. No. Acts chapter 4, verse 12, and other, neither under heaven is there given any other name Jesus, 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 whereby we must be saved among men. Oh, listen to me, dear friend. Listen to me. I don't care how far you've fallen. You might be like the prodigal son. You might be in the pig pen. But let me tell you something. His father welcomed him back. And my father, through his son, Jesus Christ, will welcome you back. If you lumber yourself, come to yourself as the prodigal son did and owned the condition he was in was based upon his choice, not God's choice, his choice. And he was willing to own it and to confess it. And the Bible said God forgave it as the son did was by his father. God will forgive you. Trust him right now. Save equals heaven, lost equals hell. Let me say now, it's your choice before you step out 
into eternity. Father, bless this message in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord rest you.